Hoo-ha! So, I just got out of a early screening for Ghostbusters Afterlife. And let, let me just say that I grew up with the, the first two Ghostbusters movies. Um, I, I, I was born in 1990, and I, I've always loved Ghostbusters, not not counting this movie, but I've always loved Ghostbusters. Um, I used to watch them. Uh, what's weird is that I've never seen uh, these two movies in, in HD. It's never happened before, so that's that's interesting. Like like there's a there's a couple moments during this movie where we're we're watching the OG cast. Uh, we're watching footage of them like on YouTube and shit and like. <laughs> I, I, it was just first off it was just very jarring <laughs> to see the original cast um through a laptop screen through youtube i just thought that was it was just so jarring i i feel so fucking old jesus christ and just got out of this screening loved the original two their classics and this movie it's pretty fucking great. Uh, Jason Jason Reitman directed this movie, and he he also had a hand in writing the script. And you can tell. I I, I don't know much about Jason Reitman. I, I probably should have looked into his filmography prior to the. Oh oh well, too late. But that this motherfucker is not only is a giant fan of Ghostbusters, but you can just every shot. Okay. Every, every fucking texture and surface of this fucking movie, you can tell, like, this man, Jason Reitman, loves Ghostbusters. You can tell that Jason Reitman, with every frame, he did everything in his power to try to make at, at least, like, just a worthy or a good uh, continuation of what came before. Because the trailers, they, they were just kind of like... But actually watching the movie, I was blown away by how delightful and just how funny and adorable this fucking movie was. <laughs> While watching this movie is equivalent to like uh, uh, a beautiful little puppy coming towards you and you're just like, oh, <laughs> Carrie Coon as the mother, which which was a genius stroke. I love I love Carrie Coon. Um, I loved her and the leftovers. Uh, Paul Rudd as Mr. Gruberson. <laughs> Clearly, he's great. Uh, and and him and Carrie Coon together are really good. I I don't know that they had any real romantic chemistry but um that aside i thought they did they worked really well together uh finn wolfhard as uh that is quite the name but anyway finn wolfhard as trevor uh he was he was fine holy fuck the the opening to this movie was phenomenal uh we see a uh we see a certain classic og character um during a chase sequence like the the opening to this bad boy and the, and the whole movie feels like uh feels like some kind of great lost forgotten about uh jj abrams or steven spielberg script um that's kind of what this movie feels like uh it's well paced it, it almost feels fast paced um i think the cinematography is just spot on it just totally works um, so yeah, I, I, I just feel like this location works. And not only that, like, I love that there's real physical sets. I love that m pretty much almost everything you're seeing looks like it was shot on location. I love that. I love that, uh, the movie focuses, the movie focuses more on practical effects and when something's impossible, marrying practical effects with digital effects, like I love that. Is fucking uh, what is it? Phoebe, played by someone named uh, McKenna Grace. Dog. <laughs> Phoebe was my favorite thing about this entire fucking movie. Okay, her performance <laughs> is fucking perfect, dog. She is this. Uh, she's this awkward, 
um, introvert that is just bananas, just smart as fuck. She has a problem, like, like emoting, you know, like showing her true uh, emotions, you know. And I relate so hard to this fucking character. Like, <laughs> holy fucking shit. The sound design in this movie is phenomenal. Okay, almost ear splitting in, in IMAX. Like, whether it's the, whether we're talking about like uh, the roar of the uh, Ecto vehicle, like driving past, whether we're talking about the, the thunderous boom of those uh, zigzaggy energy blasting guns, uh, whether we're talking about like the earth shattering sub bass flying around everywhere sounds um, that that mountain makes every time like a supernatural event is going on. There was one sequence where like there was like a plate and you see like a stack of like donut balls like falling off and like the environment is shaking. Okay, during that sequence, the, the film, the explosive sounds uh, were so fucking loud in the theater that I almost was just like, holy shit. It felt like the, the entire auditorium was fucking shaking. Uh, that's that's how that's how thunderous that's how thick and dense the fucking sound was. Um, it's a perfect blend of uh, old nostalgia with like fresh new ideas. You know what I mean? And uh, this movie is just it's just one big nostalgic happy pill that just etched this big ass dumbass sm smile on my face the whole time. There's a point in time during this movie where we see uh, some OG faces, and when we first see them, I was like, well, that was very abrupt. <laughs> For a Ghostbusters sequel or continuation, I mean, sure, they could have done better, but like, but goddamn, dude, there's, there's so much love that went into this this is such a feel-good movie um it's i mean yeah it could have been better but like it's it's really hard to hate on this movie like this movie had me laughing out loud um i i found it thrilling i found it exciting and i i, I found it really fun albeit dumb fun but i mean the original movies are dumb as fuck so I think the biggest problem with this movie is that, you know, the first two movies are filled with classic, iconic uh, movie moments. This movie does not have any of that moment. There's, there's nothing about this movie where I felt like, you know what, that's going to be a classic shot or that's going to be that's gonna be an iconic sequence like there's there's nothing like that in this movie um, I mean I, I, I thought I thought it was a fucking blast I mean again I think it's an 8 out of 10 I thought it was a really strong sequel